Hey guys, Johnny here. I had this amazing person today. La Forza Fit. She's from Camden, New Jersey, so I gotta give her special love for being up top. Uh, us up north people just kind of stick together. That's what we do. And she is changing not only her life, but a lot of people she touches as well. She is a fitness coach. And she has children, so she also has a job. And... She is just doing it, you know, going to work, waking up, going to her clients, taking care of the kids. She's something to be spoken about, to be admired about. A lot of moms do this, you know, and how she does it, how she finds the energy to do it is beyond me. But she has this will, this drive, this determination to continue to build and move forward. And as she speaks about her past, as she talks about her present and her future, you can you can hear the happiness. You can definitely hear how she has come alive and does once more for herself and for her children. But most of all, she has this special knack and love for her clients. She does certain things for her clients that probably normal fitness coaches probably won't do, right? It's an amazing thing. I'm not going to like, talk too much because we have the whole podcast for you to, to listen to it. But she is an amazing, amazing force to be reckoned with. She also talks about a business that she is in. Um, and I believe it's called Herbal Life. And I was not aware of it. I did not know what Herbal Life was about. And, you know, um, she definitely describes more of, of what it is in the podcast. So you can get uh, firsthand uh, information from her. But um, people... Johnny Nomad presents La Forza Fit. Good morning. How are you? I'm all right. Just all right? I'm great. I woke <laughs> up this morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up, man. Yo, thanks for coming on the podcast. Yeah, I'm I'm thankful that you asked me to come on. Yeah, no doubt. Like I was um, you know, been following you for a little bit. You know, making sure you're real. You know, sometimes these accounts be bogus, you know what I'm saying? Right. And just kind of following you a little bit. And I was like, yo, she she got something going. And then, you know, when you gave me your bio, I was like, yeah, you definitely have a story you need to, to get out of you. Yeah. So why don't we introduce you uh, to folks? Why don't you introduce yourself? All right. I'm Sheena. Um, I go by Lala Sheen. And my fitness company is called La Forza Fit. I'm in Camden, New Jersey. I'm a mother of two. I have a 14-year-old son and a 9-year-old daughter. Fantastic. And um so let's let's start like where where did the fitness thing come from? Like when did it start? How did you get into it? Okay. So, I mean, I I ran track in high school. So, I always been an athlete. I I did um long jump, I ran track in college. Um after college, I kind of you know, went to the everyday life, went and got a nine and a five, um, beat things up. I had my second child shortly after I had her, I started back. I started working out again, um, mainly because I was always really, really thin, really thin, but to the point where, you know, people always would comment and they would say things like, Oh girl, you you don't need to lose no more weight. Just, you know, things that they thought was okay, but it, it made me feel bad about who I was. So it's, like, um, it's almost like the opposite of someone who's obese telling yes. them they need to lose weight. Yeah. Yes. So um, so I, I started back, you know, getting back into fitness. Um, I had a coworker. She needed some motivation. So I would train her every day. And then I was in a car accident and mm. my car was totaled. I was out of work for five months. I had a damaged nerve in my back. So that took like two, three years away from my fitness journey. Um, in 2016, I told myself, I'm going to try to get back into it. I thought that for a long time, I thought, oh, I'm going to hurt my back more if I start working out again. So I said to myself, 
let's just see how this go. You get what I'm saying? Right. So I started off like really, you know, light stuff, just getting back into it, flexibility and everything. And then I noticed the more I did, the stronger I got. I wasn't having back pain anymore. Mm. So I was just like, okay, I had, um, you know, injection shots in, in my back from the doctors. I, I did MRIs. I did so many things for 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 medical you get what i'm saying yeah. and the whole time the key to my pain was getting in the gym and making my body stronger mm. um so yeah so then basically that's how i started getting back into my fitness so then it's i i started posting videos um I would post videos of this short little 30 minute clips of what I was doing. And it seemed like nobody was following. It seemed like nobody was really paying attention. And what is this? this on, was this on YouTube? This was on, at this point, it was on Instagram and Facebook. Okay. I didn't have my YouTube channel yet. Okay. So, um, so then I, I started getting like guys. Guys were actually reaching out to me and just telling me, hey, you really inspired me to get back in the gym. Like, I really love what you're doing. And I was like, what? Are you serious? <laughs> These guys look up to me? So, you know, I was feeling really, really great. So I, I stepped it up a notch and I started basically breaking down my, my workouts. Um, mm -hmm. You know, giving people more, you know, more information People would inbox me and ask me for tips, and I would create workouts for people. And I, this was free of charge. I wasn't charging anyone. Everything was free. Um, so then a year later, I'll say 2017, that's when I got a little bit more serious about my journey um, as far as inspiring others. Like I, I was past the point where I was doing it just for myself. I seen that people look forward to my posts. Um, so then that's when I created my YouTube channel. And, um, you know, basically whenever I meet somebody and they just tell me like, I don't know what to do. I don't even know where to begin. I would say, hey, I have a YouTube channel. If you want to go on there, I have home workouts. I have gym workouts. I have just little things that you can do um, at home and, you know, at the gym. Right. So, I, I got little subscribers. I'm not like a, hey, get paid um, for having a YouTube channel. I'm not there yet, but you know, it's not it for me. It's being able to help other people and um, you know, help like people don't have the money to pay for a personal trainer. Um, people may not have the money to pay for a gym membership. So right. I just want to teach people that. Regardless of what, what your situation is, um, you can overcome that. You just have to be dedicated and you have to plan, plan and and just basically conquer whatever it is that you want to do. So um, then at one point, my daughter, my at this point, she was around seven. She started gaining weight and she didn't like that people were like hey you're 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 chunky you're getting thick you're you know people just because she was a little kid they thought it was cute right. to say but it was basically tearing her self esteem down so that's when i started um going to the park with my kids and i'll tell them hey you guys go play i'll be right here at the track and i'll be working out and then after like a month of doing that with them they started joining me for the workouts like i didn't make them do it it was just something that they were interested in doing because they seen me do it every day right um that's huge so, go ahead no that's i'm saying that's huge right there yes so, you know what i'm saying so with, with that being said like more parents need to actually do that then right you know I mean, what I'm saying? And Involve the family into the, yes, the whole event. Yeah. And, and you wasn't pushing them. You just said, yo, you go do your thing in the playground. I'm going to do my thing. And just by them witnessing you, right. you inspired your own children. Right. And my son, he, he's um he's in a football and I'm a single mother. So he his his father is in Virginia. 
So, and we're in New Jersey. So we're nine hours away from each other. Right. So he doesn't have that father to take him to football practice every day. He doesn't have that father to train him during off seasons. So I do that. You get what I'm saying? And that yeah. is a bonding experience for me and my son and also a healthy experience for us because it also shows him that men aren't the only ones that can be personal trainers. Men right. aren't the only people that know about football. Women know about these things too. So right. for him, for my, my son and I, I think that it was a great experience for him because it gives him a different outlook um, of women, especially him being 14 and a teenager and, and getting older and he'll be in high school next year. I think it, it was, I was so happy that he was open to allowing me to be his personal trainer, basically. And when football season came back around, um, unfortunately, his team was really small. They only had 11 players. 11 players go on the field. So he couldn't come out the game. He did kickoff. He did puck return. He did offense. He did defense. He did everything. And he basically was like the v, the um, MVP of the team because he averaged he averaged six seven uh, quarterback sacks he he or he averaged about thirteen to fifteen tackles each game he he was a dominant player wow. for his team and he actually at the end of the season he said to me mom if I didn't work out with you I wouldn't have been able to do that. So, uh, you know, it, it, that's what's up. It was like last year was a really, really, really great year for us as a family. Um, my daughter overcame the self esteem issues. She's not a, you know, she, she's, she's lean, muscular. She still continues to go to the gym. I have a, a gym membership for her for the kids' gym. Me and my son, we go on the main floor and we do our thing while she's in the kids' area. And, I mean, it's been a great experience for us. So let me ask you about that. About you know, I think, I think a lot of a lot of gyms in that in that kind of area f- do forget about the kids. Yeah. You know, they really cater to adults, and you know, some of them may have a little daycare, but they're not yeah. doing they're not yeah. doing shit with them. Yes, <laughs> you're exactly. You're correct. Like, um, I have went to LA Fitness in the beginning of my journey, and one. The, the kids' membership was extremely high. I couldn't afford it because I already was paying $50 a month for my membership. Right. So to go and pay another $30 for a kid's membership, you know, at, as a single mother, I don't have that. So a new gym opened up in our area, Edge, and they have a kid's gym. And my son and I, he, we have one membership. I only pay $25 a month. And I pay $25 for my daughter. So I'm paying $50 of what I used to pay at the old gym for two memberships on top of with Edge. They actually do instruction classes with the kids. It's not just, okay, go ahead and play. They provide structure. They teach the kids um, exercises. And they also have their little leisure time where they have fun and they can play and, you know, run around. And they keep them separate. They have infants, they have the toddlers, and then they have, like, the kids that go up to 13 years old. So I really love I really love that gym. Only thing is I call it Club Edge because <laughs> everybody goes there. <laughs> so <laughs> No, but that's great. That's, that's another family experience, right? Instead of right. just sitting in front of the TV and downing some ice cream and popcorn, exactly. you know, you guys can really – and it's also I think it's just really true a bonding experience. At that point, you know, conversation starts to come up when you least expect it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And your children will tend to, to look at you totally differently in the respect level. And honestly, at the same time, so I'm originally from Brooklyn, so that would keep kids out the street. Exactly. Exactly. And that's you know, the one thing I don't have to worry about. In the summertime, my kids are like in the house all day. I'm like, y- y'all don't want to go outside? Yeah, You don't want to go play? You don't want to go meet people? They're like, no, we're fine. Are you going to the gym today? Like, that's <laughs> <laughs> And I'm just like, you get what I'm saying? As a mother, I cannot complain. Yeah, I do want them to get fresh air, but I'd rather them be around me all day. Like, it's just us. You get yeah. what I'm saying? 
Absolutely. Keep them out of trouble. No, absolutely. So when you really embarked on this fitness journey, right? Mm-hmm. And you really wanted to get in, you know, into training folks. How nervous were you? Did you did you really think you were that good? Did you doubt did you, did you doubt yourself? Like uh, I was I care about people's feelings too much, I must I would say. So it wasn't that I was afraid. I was I didn't want one person to feel like, oh, she was too too hard or she was too too easy. I I was overthinking just that part. Gotcha. And then when I finally just started basically like when someone comes to me and they ask me about personal training i have questions that i ask them you get what i'm saying i ask them what's their fitness experience you know what's their likes what's their dislikes um what what they're comfortable with do they have any body injuries stuff like that so when i walk into that first um day of training with a person i basically explain to them Today's is basically an overlook for me to see your strength, your condition, and X, Y, Z. And that pretty much can tell me what a person can tolerate moving forward. And then I just basically build each of my clients up based on their capabilities. I don't I don't go into a workout and I don't give the same workout to all my clients. So I might train somebody at 7 o'clock at night. And then I might have another client come in at eight. They're not going to do the same thing. You get right. what I'm saying? Because they're two different people and they might have two, two different goals. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, like I said, it was just more so I didn't want, I didn't want people to be afraid because I already do heavy weight lifting. I, you know, I'm deadlifting a hundred, I mean, 275 pounds. I'm squatting. Five, um, you know, so I'm doing freestyle push ups, Superman push ups, all this crazy stuff, and that's already intimidating on you know, for a person looking on the outside. So I tell people, like, I will never make you do what I do. I'm you know, what I'm saying I've built myself up to that point, so yeah, I mean, I'm to the point where I, I kind of know. A person's body like I had one client last night she she showed up she was running a little late we so we got into the workout and I noticed I noticed that she didn't look well you get what I'm saying so yeah. I just started asking her questions are you okay did you eat before you came xyz she's like yeah I did eat and then uh, five minutes later she's like I think I need to go outside and get some fresh air and then I say you know we could cut this short and we could just be done because you don't look well. That's why I've been, I asked you since you came in. And she was like, yeah, I think it was something that I ate. You get what I'm saying? So I tell my clients, I pay attention to, to you. I notice right. when you're having a good day, when you're having a bad day, when, when you might didn't, just may not feel like being here. You get what I'm saying? So, so let me ask you, with that being said, like, how often do you see maybe your clients or people in general like this not, it's it's kind of habitual right the new year's come people <laughs> all the, the the gym membership you know yeah it's, it's go skyrocket right and mm-hmm. people like yourself who are, who are now fit who are who are trained up and go to the gym all the time kind of hate that time of year cuz now you can't get to the damn machines no. right everything right. is jam packed and then by march like around now everybody's kind of dropped out okay <laughs> right? so Right now, the previous years, yes, I would say that. Now, this year, as far as going to the gym, it has not died down. All mm-hmm. those people are still sticking to their goals. Um, for personal training, um, now it's starting to pick up, even with my Herbalife, because I'm an Herbalife health coach as well. What is that? So, Herbalife is um, a nutrition um, company. So basically, we help with weight loss, weight gain, healthy weight, skin, um, digestive, just different things. Um, Those are all types of products and stuff? Yeah, like supplements, yes. Okay. And and vitamins. Okay. Um, So I would say around like September, October, things were very, very very slow. I mean, when I, I had like one client and... Just within the past month, 
I'm at 15 clients in a, in one month. Wow. So, um, you know, people are look like people are starting to realize that they do need the help. And like I said, I, I, I'm not just in this just for like, Oh, I need to make extra money. I want the money. I want the exposure. I, I love doing this. Like my full-time job. Um, I've been with the, my job for eight years. I worked with trauma girls, girls that have been raped or molested. Mm. Um, I was a paraprofessional, a, a long-term substitute inside of school. And I worked with boys with substance abuse. And now I'm back working with girls. So my passion has always been to help others. However, you know, right now with the generation that we have right now, they don't want to be helped. They think they know it all. They think they got everything you know, their minds made up. So right now I'm just in that point where I want to help those who want to be helped. So that's why I love doing a personal training in herbal life because I like I have clients that say, I have to figure out how to pay you, how to give you something extra because you do so much. And I was like, your your results and when you tell people the good job that I do. That's your extra paying. That's how you pay me extra. I don't need you to give me no money. You get what I'm saying? Because your results are going to draw people to my coaching. Right. So now with, now with the herbal life, you mentioned it again, like, uh, is that what you also providing to your, your clientele as well? So I give people the option. I don't, for, I don't force, um, herbal life onto anyone. Um, it's an option. You get what I'm saying? So, so if someone comes to me and they say they want personal training, I tell them my personal training rate. Um, I tell them my, my the Herbalife plan. Um, so it's really up to what a person wants. And um, some people start off and say, I just want personal training. And eventually maybe we could talk about Herbalife. And some people just, I had one person, we worked together about four years ago and she came, she found me on Facebook last month and she said she signed up on Facebook just so she could find me because someone told her I did Herbalife. So and explain more like, um, so Herbalife is, is it your own line or no. So is it, is a, is it 90, is in 90 countries is, it's been around since, um, the eighties. Um, is, is nothing new. Um, you, I mean, it's a very successful business. You have people that do Herbalife full time, like that's their full time that may grow to fifteen thousand a month. You have some people that do it part time that just want to get, you know, a few extra dollars for gas money or whatever it is that they need. So it is based like it's is a nutrition company. However, you as um, the health coach, you're able to operate your business how you want. You get what I'm saying? Like, no one tells me when to open. Nobody tells me when to close. Nobody tells me how many clients I need to recruit each month. It's, it's all based on my personal goals and what I want to do. Gotcha. Okay. So it is. And then after after tw the thing that I like with Herbalife um so when you start off as a health coach, you, you start off at the, as a distributor, you start off at 20% discount. So you make a 20% profit off of your sales and you get a 20%, 25% discount. And as you accumulate points, you get promotions. So last night I just was promoted to a qualifying supervisor. So now I make 50% off of my profits and I make 50%, I get 50% off of my product. Wow. And then after and then after 12 months of you being um, a health coach or distributor, you can open up like a, a big business. Like I can find a location. And if I want to do a nutritional club where I sell shakes and teas and vitamins and offer personal training, I can do that. Oh, wow. So you also have the option to a brick and mortar. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Nice. So now you I know I know before, too, like you mentioned. Or maybe you have like you know she have like an overactive thyroid as well. Yeah, yeah. So I had a, um over I have an overactive thyroid, but they felt like it wasn't to the point where they need to remove my thyroid. And what um, is and what is that exactly? What what is the overactive thyroid? So basically, like my metabolism is burning like extremely fast. 
So, it's so, hard so that's why you were so thin. Yeah. So it's hard for me to maintain weight. So my weight will fluctuate. So I can be, um, my, my smallest was, my smallest was 128 pounds. The most I've ever weighed was 155 pounds. However, 155 pounds was me after I had a baby. You get what I'm saying? So right. that's normal. Right. And um, before my herbal life uh, journey, I was stuck at 138. And um, now I'm at, I'm at like 142, 145. The, the last time I checked. Um, so, and I've been at that for four months, which is good for me. Because like I said, one month I'll be up and then the next month I'll be down. If I have personal issues, if I'm overly stressed or something like that, it's really, really hard for me to um, maintain that weight. So aside from just the weight gain, the herbal life has helped me as far as like my personal growth, because um, we work on personal development. It's not just like I sell products to people. So every day, like I do one-on-one -on -one coaches with coaching with my clients. I have a private group where we all like we post our meals, we post our products, we I post daily um like personal developments from like John Ron and um Mel Robbins and different you know influencers that uh, post stuff on their YouTube channel. So. I go on every morning and I'll find something motivational um, just for my clients and I'll post it inside the group. And it also helps me. You get what I'm saying? Because it helps yeah. me learn how to ignore negativity, especially, you know, in the workplace. <laughs> right. um, or when I'm frustrated or when I'm going through a hardship and I just feel like I want to give up. I can't give up because I know that I have 15 other people that's counting on me aside from my two children that's watching me every day. So the herbal life has helped me like with personal growth as well. So let me ask you this, like, um, do you do house calls? Like, you know, going to people's like it's for some people, they, they they feel embarrassed to go to the gym, right? Uh -huh. They, they got into a certain weight. They don't feel comfortable going outside. Um, do you work with people? That feel yeah. that way? Yeah, yes. I so I had one client last year. She didn't want to train at the gym. So she was open to do the park. And I have like equipment that I keep inside my car. So I have like a little um a little um tote and I have a bunch of uh workout equipment inside the car that I just travel with. Um so I I basically adjust to my clients' needs. So because that's what you're paying me for. You get what I'm saying? This is your journey. And I'm here to support you during your journey. So if I have someone that says, oh, can we start off and you just come to my house? Yeah. You know, depending on how far you live, I might have to charge, you know, like a commute uh, fee. But, yeah, I'm open to help my clients. I probably, some people say I, I'm like, I baby my clients. But I'm not, I try to tell people I'm not babying them, I'm building them up because I really take my time with them. And also during our personal training, I teach them about their body mechanics. I teach them about their workout, like, you know, things to do when they're alone, because I'd rather teach my clients what they should do. So if they ever go through a hardship and they can't pay me, they can still maintain their results. And then when they get the money, they could come back to me. Right. Have you ever felt that no doubt you're doing a great job as far as getting them physically fit, but mentally they're fucking shot? Yeah, I have. I have one. I have one person that was just like that. She just she never seen like she never gave herself credit. She always put herself down. She just always had a negative view about herself. And at times, depending on what I'm dealing with that day. It was draining. You get what I'm saying? And because I try to tell people, I'm still human. I still have feelings. I still have emotions. Sure. I'm not perfect. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah. so when you bring, when you spring on your negativity onto me, it's just like, oh, it's, oh it's infectious. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. however, that one, and it's funny that you said that, that one person, I haven't talked to her in about two months. 
And last night, she, I had I get a little bing to my phone, and she puts a, a, a deposit down for her to start her Herbalife plan. Oh and wow! Then, and then she texted me and said, "Hey, I just want to let you know I sent you a PayPal. I figure I'll pay something this week, and then I'll pay something next week because I really, really need to start." And I was like, "Wow!" Like that was so surprising for her. Like, you know, for me to see her do something, because she always makes excuses of why she can't get started. And I was like, wow, like, I'm I'm really proud of her. Like, I, I feel like I need to do something for her. Like, All right. Have you, ever, have you ever seen the fact or maybe thought of a different approach to knowing that, like a situation like that, knowing that you get with someone, when you actually, you said you qualify your, 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 your clients. Do you go through a qualification process of saying, let me check out the mental state first before I take them on? And if, if I tell you, yo, I'm depressed, I'm doing all of this, and you try, and I'm just trying to work out, do, would you deny a client and say, yo, I need you to get yourself together mentally before we can work out? No, no, because to me, the it's mental first. You right. know what I'm saying? So most people that's the part that you have to work on with them is the mental part part because people have been through things and then from what i'm understanding from like a lot of my clients that are the weight loss people say nasty stuff to so i understand why they are the way you get what i'm saying the way they and why they feel that way about themselves because if you're constantly if somebody keep on telling you oh i see you trying to eat healthy today but you're still not losing Right. With your fat ass. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. If, if they have 10 people around them, and, and I had one person, and they were telling me their story, and I said to them, I said, I listen to you, and I understand that you said that that's your mother, and that's your boyfriend. Fuck them. But mo- mother <laughs> or boyfriend, I don't care who they are. I said, you need to remove yourself from them. Because yeah. there's no way you can work on yourself if you keep those people that constantly put you down every single day. It's no way possible. And all you're going to do is build yourself 10 steps up and then you're going to regress and go backwards. And then you're going to start indulging in the unhealthy eating. And then the unhealthy eating is going to turn into you gaining the weight back. And then the gaining the weight back turns into the depression. It's a domino effect. And that's what I tell my clients. So I don't turn people away because of their, their mental state. However, I am I pay attention to it. You get what I'm saying? If I feel like you put my put me or my other clients in a situation, well, well, I had a situation where I operate boot camps on, on Wednesdays and Saturdays. And last summer, I was I was running free boot camps for the whole month of May and June. My boot camps are free. Okay. And I had a girl, she was coming to the boot camps. So one week she, she, the first week she came, she was really supportive. I said, oh man, I like this girl. She was like clapping everybody on, cheering them on and everything. Then the following week she came to my boot camp and she started working out. And then I looked to the side, I noticed her crying. And so I went and checked on her. I'm like, you okay? So she told me her little story. And I was like, okay, well, just take a breather and I'm going to come back and I'm going to check on you. The next thing I know, she started flipping out. Now, she calmed down. She was she explained that she lost her ring or whatever. Now, the following week after that, she starts working out with us. She walks off. Now, now this is when I learned that the girl was on drugs. Mm. She was on drugs. And she comes back and She's basically cursing all of us out. Every all the girls at boot camp, she's cursing us out. She starts trying to rip the hood of my car off. She like we had to call the cops. She she stripped her clothes and everything. You get what I'm saying? So I've I've yeah. dealt with some some stuff. However, that has never deterred me from not wanting to do this, and right. it hasn't changed. Um, the way I accept my clients because, you know, if I see later on, you know, after two or three trainings is a warning sign, then I'm going to just have to ask you to remove and I'll just change my location so you won't know where we are anymore. That's all. 
Damn, that's crazy. So, <laughs> where do you see yourself going in the future? What's your What's your plan? How How big you want to scale this? Well, my well, I have a few goals. My My number one goal is to make fitness and herbal life eventually my full time, and my full time my part time. Um, right. I would like to also like travel around and do um you know group trainings in different states and countries and I I want to travel because I want to also I want my children to see this. You get what I'm saying? I want to I want Absolutely. them to see that they could be their own business um person from at eight the age of 18 and luckily for herbal life you can be a health coach at the age of 14. You get mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Right. Like I, my son isn't ready for that yet. He's not, and and it's something if he wants to do, he right. can do it. But I want I want to really show him because he has he has a learning disability, and you know his goal is football, and and he's really good. I mean I believe that he can go pro if he if he gets over being lazy. You get what I'm saying? Because I always tell him I can't want your goals more than you want them. Right. You get what I'm saying? So I'm not going to tell you it's time to get up and come to the gym. You need, you know what time we go to gym. You need to be ready. You get what I'm saying? That's going to be the difference between me saying that you want it. But I want him to see this because if football doesn't work and then his backup plan is to become a police officer, if those things don't work, I want him to understand that he has the fitness experience under his belt already. And he can. So I've been even trying to motivate him. Post your workout videos. You work out with me every day. I record you. Post it on your page. But it's it's not what he wants to do yet. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, you can't so, force him. It's pretty much just like what you did. What you took him to the park. It was like, yo, just witness. Just witness me. And you're gonna jump on. You jump on. Right. Type of thing. So I mean, he does notice. Like we'll be out. Like it's been a few times. Like we were in the mall. We were in the store and someone stopped me like, hey, I follow you on Instagram. Hey, I, I'm, I'm subscribed to your YouTube channel. And he was like, mom, are you famous? I was like, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you have a really tight page in, on, on IG. You know what I'm saying? Thank like, um, It's definitely really motivating. Like, If people don't, um, don't know how to get to you, it's La underscore Forza, F-O-R-Z-A underscore fit. And um, your page is dope. Like you know, you you really showing um, how 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 you're coming through. You're showing uh, your clients as well, which is awesome mm-hmm. to, for you to share your clients because uh, it, it really it really gives people more of an idea of your testimony too. You know what I'm saying? Right. And and to show that you're you're for real. You're you're definitely the real deal. Um, yeah. And that's important, especially when you're building a business. You know what I'm saying? Um, exactly. But no, you're you're. Your IG is dope. I'm loving it. Now, so what's where can I find you on YouTube? What's your, what's your YouTube your YouTube handle? Um, my YouTube channel is Kamani K A M A N I one two three zero. So that's basically my daughter. My daughter name is Kamani, and my son his birthday is December thirtieth. So I put both of them together. No, that's what's so that's dope. Like I hear your goals. I hear about the herbal life thing, which is fantastic as well. Um, and you started Herbal Life like how long ago? I actually just started Herbal Life this past August. And what made you really? What made you go with them? And how how did you become aware of them? Um, I mean, like I said, Herbal Life's been around for years, so I, I never heard of them. That's why. So um, okay, well, so I've had a few people over the years um, really try to get me to join Herbal Life and. At one point, I was just like, no, I'm natural. I just work out. I just work out. I don't do any of that. I don't take supplements and, or anything. Um, but then I, I reached a plateau. So I wasn't seeing any more results. Um, I needed to change my eating habits. You know, I was one of them, like, skinny fat girls. Like, oh, yeah, I'm naturally <laughs> skinny, so I can eat whatever I want. But then, yeah, I want to complain that I want a six-pack. You get right. what I'm saying? They, they, yeah. It just don't go together. Um, so 
actually I had one coach and he he stuck he stuck out. He's actually my business partner now. Um, he just basically he just basically he he never gave up on me. You know, every day he would be in my my DM like, hey, I really just want I want you to join. I want you to get on this. I want you to be a part of this. And and I was just like blah 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 whatever. Okay. <laughs> Um, so I was, you know, I was explaining to him that, and I have tried like protein shakes and stuff like that. And I was having side effects from them. I was getting, um, bad migraine from the way. So, um, basically one day he asked me like, can we just meet up and we, you know, just have a business meeting. So we met up and he gave me some samples and he said, try these out, try them out. And if it don't work for you. I'm going to leave you alone. So I tried it out. I went three days. I said, I reached out to him. I said, hey, I I took, I I did the shakes three times, two times a day and everything. Like you said, I did not get one headache. And I said, this is the first time. I mean, when I say I've tried so many different lines of protein, I would just get headaches all the time. Right. So that's when... So that's basically when he introduced me to becoming a health coach because you most people usually start off as a client, but for me he was just like you already have the work work ethic, you already do the fitness, you already know what to eat, you already know what to do. So I don't need to coach. I want you to be my partner. So he I, I joined him um, as an herbal life coach in in August, and like I said. It was slow. You know, I had one person sign up. I had one, just one client for a while. And then I just went from one to 15 to I'm like at this moment, I'm chatting with people on Facebook and, you know, I share the information with every, with with at least I'll say two people, three people each day, if not more. Wow. That's awesome. So with that, with the products that that you're having a, Right now, especially with the you talked about earlier, the younger generation, and this whole vegan craze, right, or mm-hmm. the the keto craze, right? Yeah. Um, how does those products, the Herbalife product, work? Like, if I'm vegan, is these products gonna satisfy me? I'm be happy with the ingredients or not? Or okay, so like we, so like I said, we have different lines. So we have um. We have gluten free products. We have um the vegan. I'm not sure if the vegan has been released, but that is that's in the making. Um, so the so basically how it is like say for instance, um, I had someone contact me from India um, mm-hmm. about Herbalife, and he was like, I want to gain weight. So you know, I don't just give people information like boom. I was like, hold on, what country are are you in? I started asking him questions. I said, let me look up and see what's available because say. So when I looked up in India, they only had the white canisters. White canisters are for people who want to lose weight or just maintain a healthy weight. Um, black canisters are what I use. They're there for that. Like it's called the Formula One sport. So it's more like an athletic. It helps you build lean muscle. Okay. So they didn't offer that in his country. However, I can still guide him on how to gain his results. You get what I'm saying? He would right. just do, he would do a white canister, but he would do an extra shake instead of only doing two shakes. And, you know, I would tell him to eat a protein based snack with his shake so he could get the gains. So, you know, it is ways that people can still get their results. However, some countries don't have as much as other countries. Like we have um, aloe. Aloe is for um, your digestive system. It helps um, eliminate bloating and everything. So we they come in different flavors. They come in, you know, just regular. Um, it comes in cranberry, comes in mandarin, comes in mango. Um, and some countries, they have grape. But here in the U.S., we don't have grape. Gotcha. Um, so, you know, like I said, um, we... The U.S. we have the most products available at this time, um, 
in other countries, they might just have different flavors or they might not have so many products. Like they might only have nine products available in their country. Gotcha. So it, it is, like I said, it's in 90 countries. However, each country has their own like guidelines and products and stuff like that. Right. Of course. So let me ask you this as well, like talking about the like, you know, because it's not just about working out. It's also about what you ingest when you put inside your body as well. Have you found where, because eating healthy is not cheap, right? No, have, it's have, not. Have you found that your clients are struggling, you know, and they may not see either weight loss or gains due to, you know, not being able to afford the diet um, to really like make a difference with themselves? Right. So I have a, I have, I actually have a client. Um, she signed up last month and, um, she she said that she had she knew somebody that knew someone that was an herbal life coach and she reached out to them and she said that person just seen so she said she ended up she said I liked her picture on Instagram and then she clicked on my page and she seen that I was herbal life and then she she ran across my backup page so she said she was like I just you know I sent you a message and basically we started chatting and she was ready to pay at right then and there. And usually you don't have people that's ready to pay right then and there. You got people that's like, all right, I, I, I get paid on Friday or right. they start giving you all these dates and all this stuff. So I'm like, oh, OK. But long story short, um, last week she reached because what I do, like I said, I have a, a, a group of with all of my clients and then. I tell my clients, if any time they need to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, they have my personal cell phone number, too. So, so it's not like, okay, you can't contact me on my cell phone. So anyway, long story short, she contacted me on an indiv individual chat, and she basically was explaining that she is on a fixed income. So she started running out of some of her products. So when I have people that are dealing with that, I come up with different options. So I'll basically say, hey, well, you could be become one of my preferred members. So basically, that's just like a, a VIP member. So what they do is they'll, um, it's $40, and then they'll get a discount on their products forever. And when they start, the, when they start buying, um, they accumulate points. So their discount gets higher so they can earn from 20 percent to 40 percent off of their product or i'll give someone an option of becoming a distributor so they can make so even if you make extra money to just buy your product you get what i'm saying because remember you have, have the freedom to operate your business how you want so or i come up with a budget plan where they may Say for instance, if someone has two hundred dollars, they could they want to spend a month. I'll get I'll make a plan for two with two hundred dollars for them, and it'll probably last them a little over a month. You get what I'm saying? And they still reach their goal. so is <laughs> even if you start with just a core nutrition plan where it's just like your shake and your tea and your multivitamin, you right. still want to get the goals because I still provide um a shopping uh, list for you. A eating schedule for you, a home workout guide, a gym, and for all my local clients, they have free access to my boot camps on Wednesdays and Saturdays. So mm -hmm. I create the way I create and run my business is so my clients can be successful and reach their goals. That's fantastic. That's very thorough. So, the, are you charging extra for all this like additional information you're giving them in time? No, if you purchase Herbalife, if you purchase an Herbalife packet, that comes with your packet. Okay. So, I mean, regardless if you spend, I don't, if you're spending a hundred dollars and if you're spending five hundred dollars, you you both going to still get the same same treatment, the same you get what I'm saying, the same access to boot camp, the same same grocery list and X Y Z. The only thing your products would be different because that person is investing a little bit more into their plan. Right. 
And this is in conjunction with a proper diet, of course, right? Yeah. Well, that's why you have the eating schedule and the shopping, the the shopping list, the shopping guide. So it tells you like it breaks down the do's and don'ts. No soda, no alcohol, no flour, no. You get what I'm saying? It runs. It, I mean, when I say it's broken down to an eight year old can read it and understand is. <laughs> <laughs> seriously that's dope <laughs> some of us need that <laughs> <laughs> yeah no seriously yeah because we all everyone comprehends differently so no yeah and, and a lot of times it could be intimidating too just you just see all this stuff and then you have to relearn and a lot of people get scared mm-hmm. just from relearning how to how to cook again or put in, or buying different foods than that used to yeah uh, there's, there's definitely a, a large learning curve there and i tell people and and this is what i told my clients i say don't overthink it don't be too fancy. Don't try to get on there and make a meal that you seen on Fit Man Cook where he putting cilantro and this and that and all this garnish. Like, be basic. Brown rice, your vegetable, your protein. Like, you get what I'm saying? Don't overthink the process because once you start doing that, then that's when you make it difficult for yourself. All right. Cause like, yeah, a lot of times you're right. Like you know, you watch all these other cooking shows and they're doing too much. It's too so, much. Yeah. Or you or you buying all these ingredients for one meal, and you're not going to use half of that stuff in, in any other meal for the week. So you're spending more money that you that you need than you need. Yes. You like you spend that extra thirty dollars. That thirty dollars could have been on one another product for your for your plan. Yes, absolutely. So, and and it, it, to your point, the biggest thing too is really the meal planning, making sure that you have that understanding. Because once you ha- take the the thought of trying what you're gonna eat next, it's not as intimidating no more. And you just take out your your meal out of the fridge and go at it, and that's it. And plan yes. it for the week. And I, I know yes. for a fact that like, I know I've changed my, per- my 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 eating habits as far as or my purchasing as well. Where I used to buy a bunch of produce, and more than half the shit went bad because I didn't get to it. And exactly. you're wasting money that way as well. So now I go to the supermarket every other day, which is like, you know, every two days, depending on the recipe I'm making and then buying the stuff I need for that particular recipe at that point. Right. Um, just, you know, and then I was doing meal planning, but by Friday, depending, and then it depends what you have to, you have to too, right? As far as what, what um, uh, produce or protein, like, it might not hold up or taste well by, by, by the fifth day. And what I did was I did meal planning for every three days. Right, right. Yeah, you know that's what, what I, Yeah, that's what I mean. I even with like fruit, I, the tips that I give my clients, I tell them to cut up their fruit and to put it in freezer bag. Like first make you a fruit salad for the first two or three days. You get what I'm saying? But then the rest freeze it. And you can make you can throw that fruit inside your smoothie, smoothie. and your shakes. Yep. Absolutely. And stuff like that instead of wasting your money. And then they were like, a few, a lot of my clients were like, I never thought about that. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a nice fresh ice cube. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or yeah. make your smoothie cold too at the same time. Right. So, so that, a lot of yeah. people weren't, weren't, weren't thinking about that. So I do give a lot of tips on how they can save money and just how they can be successful with their goals. And I tell people, if you just follow, I'm not trying to be your mom. You get what I'm saying? I'm not trying to... No, you're a coach. I, I'm your coach, right? And I want <laughs> you... Because the last thing I want you to be a, a bad representation of me. You're a representation of me. Once I post you on my page and say, hey, welcome to Herbalife, da 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 you're a reflection of me now. So the last thing I want somebody to say, like, oh, she been working out or he been working out with Sheena for X amount of time and she look like she getting bigger. So. Right. That's the last thing. <laughs> that's, that's the wrong direction you want to go. Right. <laughs> so with your, with your success and how you started and what does your network look like now, like in the fitness industry? Like, are you building that up even more? Like, you know, how because when you start your business, especially for brown brown and black people, right? We right. tend to have we don't know the value of a network, right? Right. And so by you going into this field, of course you probably didn't know nothing about it. You, you taught yourself, you got yourself to yeah. this point now. Uh-huh. And you, you know, people started fucking with you based off what you were doing. They're like, Oh, she she she's the real deal. So how did that help your network? 
and where and where you are now, like using your network? Well, at this, like I said, with the, the with the herbal life, I told you it just started popping off like thirty days ago. So, <laughs> however, it has like I tell people I have a story. You get what I'm saying? Aside from my oh, I was thin and I was this and my kids and other than that, you know, being a single mother. Me with the personal training and the herbal life, because when you when people purchase a plan through me, it's not like I have to give herbal life all that money and then they send me money back. No, I keep my port. I keep my profit and I save my money up. So right. on my bye weeks, when, you know, it's not that pay week, I've been good. You know, I'm comfortable. I mean, I, I want to do better. Don't get me wrong. But. I can say, okay, aside from my full-time job, I'm making an extra thousand dollars a month. You get what I'm saying? And that's, that's good for me for who, for somebody that wasn't doing that two months ago. So, I mean, it's been really, really helpful. Um, as far as with, um, the personal training, especially having extra income, I don't have to work overtime, at my job, um, you know, every day and kill myself and be mentally drained and burnt out. Right. I'm in, I, I just, I'm in a better place just overall, like overall doing the personal training in our herbal life. Would, would you ever have ever thought that personal training would have been your thing? Never, never. You know why? Cause I be like, I always say, I can't stand people. They get on my nerves. Like they so difficult. <laughs> but like I say, it's just it's that passion, you know, and I love it. So I don't know, like that one hour of personal training, or even with my boot camps, like my girls, they have so much fun. They laugh, they joke. Like you know, I I, I do jokes, I twerk, I do, you know, I make I make everybody feel comfortable, you know. So it's really a great experience. And it, and like I said, it was a lot of personal growth for myself because now I'm vocal. I, I would never, ever in the past have done this, this Skype and talk to a stranger, someone that I don't know, or even have this conversation and sharing my personal experience. I've, I would never do this like five years ago. It's crazy how you come full term, right? It's like how certain things has pushed you forward and make you do things that you, you would never thought you would do before. Never. I would never. I, listen, when I, when we're, and I call my cousin and tell her, I just did, I just did a podcast. She gonna be like, what? <laughs> no, not you. Like, seriously, like, I'm how, you, how do you think, how do you think I feel? Like, I, I, I got to contact strangers every day. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, my, like I'm the person I'm the person in my family that like my cousin they always tell when they meet a guy or or they're getting really really serious they always tell them um you gotta meet Sheena and that's if if she gives you the okay then we're good right because they know I I'm like mm, no mm, I don't like the vibe <laughs> mm, mm, no you, you, you blink wrong so <laughs> So, I mean, I'm really, like, that outspoken person. So most people just like, you know what? I'm not dealing with her. So <laughs> it's, I've grown a, a whole lot. I've learned to be a little bit nicer and to filter my thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that up north joint. You know, that's how right. we are. Right. That's just you know, us. That's, that's, that's who we are. Like, we just, we're just going to mean grill you. We're going to tell you exactly yeah. how we feel <laughs> when we feel it. No, 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 no apologies. And this, this is what it is. That's rough, rugged, and raw. You know what right. I'm saying? <laughs> and that's it. So I get you because I'm now I live in Atlanta. So okay. I had to, I had to switch up my communication style because people were, they didn't know how to fucking take me. They were, they were, they were going crazy for. It. They thought I was bananas. Yeah. So, so I had to switch it up and I had to, you know, throw some, you know, a little extra niceness into it. But it's not a bad thing because now, like you said, you you switched it up a little bit. And you, like you said, you, you were like, I don't like people. And now all you're doing is dealing with people. Yeah. You know, but it's at a different level. It's at a level that you that you are allowing it to be. 
Right. And that, I have control. I have control over. And that's the. Right. And like I said, that's the. For me, that's the most important part to it, because I have a full time job and I have I've been through a lot at that full time job. You know, I've been an acting director. I'm an assistant manager. You know, I've filled so many shoes during the time that I've been there and to always feel unappreciated, um, right. undervalued, um, just, you know, treated like. It's just part of the cattle. That's yeah, it. Yeah, I could, you, oh, we could replace you. Yeah. You know, so like I said, this place that I am, I'm in right now is such a great space and I'm so thankful to be where I am right now, you know, and I've made, I started making a transition for this. I've, I've always, I've worked second shift from, you know, two 30 to 10 30. Then I say, you know what? My kids are, I need to be home with my kids. I went to a morning position. I worked seven to three and just within this past month, I transition. I'm on overnight shift. I go in at 10:30. I get off at 8:30. You know, I'm I'm resting up. I I still go to the gym at the same time with the kids, and uh, nothing has changed where my kids don't feel like I'm not giving them the attention. You get what I'm saying? Right. I'm still doing everything, but I kind of started setting up my life so I can operate with the full time job and do this full time. You know, like I could put more time into it. So I, I'm, I am, I'm thankful because the old me would have just been narrow minded. I would have been stubborn and I would have been like, oh, no, because I'm not letting go of my shift. It's so hard to get. I took it took me five years to get this shift. I would have been so stubborn. And then instead of seeing and looking at the 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 light at the end of the tunnel, you get what I'm saying? Like, no, yeah, because I want to see the old you just cared about having a shift. Now, yeah. not the new you was like, now I'm gonna use this to play off what I really want to do, which is outside this right. fucking place, not to fucking shift. Right. And people yeah. like, you no, know, people feel big about themselves when they get their fucking shift. They're like, yo, I'm a, I'm on first shift now. Like, yeah. oh, I'm yeah. bigger oh, than you. Yeah. Trust and believe. Oh, trust and believe. <laughs> they sick right now too. And I, on top of me leaving the first shift, I left the whole house that I worked worked in. So mm-hmm. they sick. So. And That's I'm just wrong. sitting here. I'm just happy. Right. I'm just happy going down the yellow brick road. Like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm I'm super happy for you in the real. Like, like to to see your to see your page. Like I said, to to finally get to chop it up with you, and to see where your mindset is at. That says a lot for women, for black women, for yes. for people up top. You know what I'm saying? Just you know, being a minority and and knowing that we're really the majority. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's yes. like it's. It's, it's, it's awesome to see black ownership. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And to have that, because we're not taught that. You know what I'm saying? We're not taught to have ownership or entrepreneurship. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And for you to find it, and the, and now you know, you're developing it, and you seeing because every time you make a step, you're getting results from it. That's huge, because we tend to give up right away. Right? Yeah. We tend yes. to not see the results yes. and say, yes. yo, I'm, I'm done. I don't have the patience for it. I want to be. Yeah. Patience. Every, That's every, what I was just going to yeah. say. Patience, patience, patience. I, the old me, I want immediate results because I was spoiled rotten. Right. Like, I mean, I would, growing up, I could come home and be like, oh, yeah, those new Jordans came out. Can we go to the mall? <laughs> oh, yeah, come on. Let's go. I got anything that I want. I mean, you know, I was Iceberg, Gucci, Coogee. I did all that you know, as a teenager. So when I became an adult and a parent, and I'm like, oh, I can't afford that. No. Like, what's her dumb ass buying me that? She's <laughs> stupid. You get what I'm saying? But right. like, so I didn't have that patience. And just b- before Herbalife, you know, just posting every day, I'm like, why? I only got 15 views. And this girl, she just twerking. She got 23,450 views. Like, you know, I started, I was comparing. Right, I can't was, do that. Yeah. I, you know, and, and that's where I was, what I was doing wrong in the beginning. And then when I came to a point, I was just like, you know what? It ain't about how many people see. It's about the right person seeing this. 
Correct. It's about it's about having the active followers. You know what yep. I'm saying? So someone can have a hundred thousand people following them, but none of them could really be active. You right. know what I'm saying? And you can have a thousand followers and like maybe a half of that, five hundred people are active. That's huge right there. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I tell people like, yo, like even for myself with the podcast, I'm not looking at numbers. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking at at my consistency. I'm in competition with myself. Right. I'm, I'm in competition of saying, hey, are you going to be consistent? Are you going to are you going to reach out to somebody today? Are you going to email them? Are you going to follow up? Are you going to make sure mm-hmm. you keep it on schedule? Are you going to respect their time? And right. you know, are you boom, boom, boom? And off of that, the love that I'm getting from or I'm interviewing feeds into me. And I'm right. like, bet. And then I'm going to do the vice versa. I'm going to feed into you as well. Because now, whoever I have, I'm going to promote you as well. Boom. And then we're going to share that shit. Exactly. And that's how it should be. But we were so busy growing up on not working with each other. Yes. So busy putting each other down. Like, even like you said, like, if someone is, is fat, why are we talking shit about them? If someone's super skinny, why are we still talking shit about them? Like, right. all we ever did was really talk shit really good. We yep. became experts at that. Yeah. We, we never held each other up. Uplift each other. Yeah, man. Like it's it, rare. I, it's yeah. rare. It is rare. It's rare. It's rare. And especially, you know, unfortunately, especially for me, my biggest supporters are strangers, to be completely honest. Yeah. Um, to be completely honest. Even one of, even a person that just recently signed up as an Herbalife client. Me and this girl, we had a we had a falling out years ago. We haven't spoken. And she seen my picture on Instagram and she reached out to me. She said, She's like, You look amazing. Like, I I want I want you to help me. You get what I'm saying? That and to me, like, those type of things make my day. You right. get what I'm saying? To see somebody that, you know, that you loved and was your friend and you know, y'all y'all had to make y'all had to separate and part ways, but for them to come back and and they could put their pride to the side and give you a compliment and, and want to spend their yeah. money with you, exactly, that's big. Absolutely, because you're not you're not in this to you know no doubt you know you, it's not a charity. It's, it's, not, it's not it's not a nonprofit. No. You know, you're, you're, oh, this not. is your business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, this is your expertise. Because I tell people like, yo, you got to charge for your skill set. If you have if you have knowledge in something, that's bread. Right. Own it. Try to find a way how to monetize it. And that's what you did. You found a way how to monetize yourself. That's huge. I, I think by 2020, you're going to be really like going part time on the main gig. <laughs> you listen, know what I'm saying? listen, let's go. Let's speak into existence. Let's yeah, go. You have to like like you, you have to. You have to really think about I mean, that. I got, so, yeah. I got a lot of I mean, I have a lot of um, um, ideas and, you know, things that I want to do. Um, especially when the weather break, I, I'm just like, I'm going to just go hard. Um, I have a cousin that's down South. She's in North Carolina. Um, she's actually getting ready to release her third book. Awesome. Um, so I'll be in North Carolina come around April and she's doing a big vending book signing and everything. So I'll be down in North Carolina. Oh, we, 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 we got it. We got to get her on the podcast. Oh, no, man. I am. oh listen, that, that's next. That's next. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, um, yeah. So, so it's a, it's a lot of big things that I, you know, and even with my self-esteem and my confidence that I want to do, you get what I'm saying? I want to come out my shell. I want to step out my shell and, and do bigger things and, you know, start going on the streets. And I mean, I don't care if I'm on the train working out, just work out anywhere. You get what I'm saying? Like, and get that exposure. So it's, it's my time. Isn't it? Nobody going to stop me but me. Isn't it fascinating when you find yourself? Yes. And I, and like I said, it's been a journey. I've never, I've never felt this, this good about myself. You know, like I always had the confidence, but, but, but under, but at the same time, it was like a mask. You get what I'm saying? I present yes. myself really, really strong. And, and cause I am, I'm strong. I'm stern. I'm, I'm like, I'm hard to read. You don't, you can't really read my emotions. You don't know how I'm going to react all the time. But that was you all for the saying? wrong reasons though. Cause you were taught that, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, you know, being up North, we're taught to be. Cold hard. and hard and and just gutter, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, so and and 
feed off of that. And then if you're soft a little bit and show your emotion, you're weak. You know, mm, you, yeah. you, you, you're right of the litter. You know what I'm saying? Type of shit. And then, and those, and like I said, with this journey, it also has helped me um, with relationships. You know, yeah. what That's I'm cool. going to accept, like my standards. And, you know, right now, and I'm in the point, at the point where I'm not interested in dating because. Most of the time, you going, you not into what I'm into, so right. I don't need nobody distracting me from my goals, you know. Right. And I and I don't live that life, that party lifestyle. Like I'm not saying no, I don't party. I can right. go out every now and then, but I'm not every weekend. That's because that don't go with my goals. You nah, know what the, I'm the partying is gonna do is because you just accomplish a milestone or achievement. Right. That, right. That's the part you. Well, really I do. might want to go out, and I might I want to. This is gonna be a big event. I'm gonna kill, put this killer dress on, and I'm yeah. a network. You get exactly. what I'm saying? It, Everything it, could be purpose. It gotta be a business move. Absolutely. It gotta be business. Absolutely. That's just fantastic, man. Hearing that, hearing the passion in your voice, you know, you can you can tell like you you're serious about your shit. Yeah, I am. You know, definitely. And I couldn't wait for this to have this conversation. I was like, man, I can't wait because I know we tried to get together last week. And I was like, man, it's damn another week. I said, damn, I can't wait to get on. And I was like, and like I said, just this your your IG account is just so honest, man. It's not it's not fluff. Yeah, I don't try to do all that. Yeah, no, nah, and that, I think that's where people make the mistake, right? They try to be too fluffy with it. And but I, but see, to me, the ones that have all that fluff, those are the ones to me that get all the. Attention. Because that's the again, one that the, it's just the, flash. If I if I if I took a picture, like mm-hmm. do you think about it, right? Like if if anything that's that's flashy and like it's almost like like flies to a light at night. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? They're gonna go to it. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's just human nature. If someone sees something twerking, they're gonna go for it, especially a bunch a bunch of dudes, you know what I'm saying? Right, but right. They ain't really trying to fuck with that person. They can't even get in touch with them. You know what I'm saying? Like they see no value in that person. They don't respect that person. Right. With you, no doubt your grind is hard and your followers are on the come up. But again, people are fucking with you. You right. know what I'm saying? In a good way. Like and you actually have active followers. Like you have clients based off what you're posting. Think about yeah. that. No, you know no, what I'm saying? Yeah. It's it's turning into into a monetary thing for you. So don't worry about the numbers. Don't worry about the hundred k or the fucking oh, name. Yeah. But like, don't don't sweat that. Just keep on doing what you're doing because every one person that follows you, or maybe three people, one out of three people are gonna contact you. Like, Yo, what what is herbal life? Right. Yo, I want to get healthy. Are you local? Where you at? Like, right. come to you. I'm gonna go to you. Type of shit. Right. You know, like you're doing your thing. Like definitely, like, like keep it. Keep you're on the right track. That's what I gotta say. You keep. Keep on the right track. Keep on motivating yourself. Keep on thinking outside the box. You know, really figure out how you can, re- um, like, reactivate your business sense into 2020. Like, you always want to be reevaluate what you did from the year before to the new right. year and switch up and see what works. Right. But you're on that already. And I, like you said, network. Like, I, don't, I can't tell people enough how huge that is because if I share my network with you and vice versa, we're going to win right. all day long. And that's where people that's where people go wrong. That's where people yeah. go wrong. Everything gotta be a competition. Like it's enough, it's enough out here for all of us to eat. It, it, yes, it you is. know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, like it don't matter if you don't want to share that information, just because you don't want to share that information doesn't mean that the people that gravi- gravitate towards me are gonna to gravitate towards you because it might be something that stands out that they like about me that you don't have. Exactly. You, you might just not have my swag. You exactly. Know what I mean? Exactly. You might not just have my outgoing or outspoken personality. Or right. you may not have my compassion. So you you can't compete with me. You get what I'm saying? Because I'm my own person. I'm my own competitor. And that's what I told my clients this morning. I said, it's you versus you. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? The only person that can stop you is yourself. Now and if you allow yourself to stay in your way, then you know you can't be on my team. No, because that's, that's facts. <laughs> we moving forward here over yeah. here. And then know what? And they they need that motivation. They don't, they don't need a, a punk ass trainer. You know what I'm right. saying? They, and honestly, I've I've had trainers in the past, and some of them were good about working you out, uh-huh. but they didn't they didn't give a fuck about you though. Yeah. 
there's yeah. some tra- there's a lot of trainers out there that's like that. Like they kind of code. They already have the routine they have in their in their head. I'm gonna have you do this, this, and this. Keep it moving, and am I gonna see you next week or not? Like type of shit. Right. Um, I've had some that were that were bomb that were very similar to you. Um, but it is a hit and miss. You know what I'm saying? And to find a good trainer, it's not easy. It's not easy. And especially that person that you could connect. I'm sorry. Your personal training got to be sort of like y- your lover, your, your your boyfriend, your girlfriend. You, you get what I'm saying? Like, because yeah, y'all, have, y'all have to connect. You, got, you have to be able to have a relationship with your coach that, like, if my client, my client would be like, yeah, I, I ate, I ate bad. Okay. You ain't bad. Guess what? You gonna throw it up today. You get what I'm saying? And that's how <laughs> right. I go. Like, and we gonna keep moving. Like, I'm yeah. not gonna be like, well, you know that the the sugar is going to sit on your lower abdominal area, and that's why you can't burn this off, and you're gonna do this. And <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. I'm not. You don't need me to chastise you. You don't need me to tell you that. You know that. But guess right. what? You you gonna know that you're not gonna do that again because I'm. You yeah. gonna throw it up. Yeah. That's it. Man, so. <laughs> I love your swag. You're a killer, bro. For real. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love this. Um, thank you for coming on. Yeah, I don't know. I told you, I'm like, I was so excited. Look, I was in here. My kids was looking out like, y'all gotta be quiet. You get <laughs> better not talk. Get out the room. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's no. You you you're the bomb. Like, we gotta chop it up again. Like, definitely. Well, I wanted like the summertime hit. I want to like hit me up. I'm definitely gonna keep in contact with you. I keep in contact okay. with all my guests. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I always follow up, check up, check on people. Um, you definitely want. I got to keep in my back pocket. Like you're just, right. you're just super real. A, um, I love it. And I'm a uh, what's it called when I when we get off? I'm gonna go on um Instagram and I'm gonna do a group and put my cut co- and plug you with my cousin. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's do that, Command. She has a book. She got to promote it. She has a book. She's I mean, she's I mean, she's amazing. Like she's she just was recently married in October. Um um her story is amazing. I'll let you I'll let her tell her story. You're going to be like <laughs> you're going to be like wow. Okay. <laughs> I love like it. no, seriously, like church girl, church girl grew up in the hood from Camden. Saved her virginity till she was married and everything. Wow. Like did it? Y- yes. So that's a, that's a rare that's a rare breed right there. Right, and she's on she's on in her first book she talked about that like how to be an everyday college student, a Christian, and you get what I'm saying a virgin. Like, oh, don't tell me no more. Don't tell me no more. So, we got to get her I'm on. A, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna plug you. With, no, but she, her story is, is way beyond that now. So that's oh, why I told man. you that part. But yeah, um, I'll let her. I'll let her. Um, so tell, tell her story. But yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's been a journey, and I, I'm I'm really thankful, especially you know, five years ago, um, I lost my mother. Well, my oh. aunt raised me. Okay. My aunt, and I left that part out. My aunt raised me since I was 18 months. And um, my mother, my biological mother, she she was around, but she she was she had her own issues, and doctors weren't diagnosing her properly. Okay. Um, they were like for, like wrongly medicating her. Um, had her under the impression that she was like schizophrenic and and all that type of stuff, but she was perfectly fine once she found out. That. And um, anyway, long story short. My aunt died, and then my mother. She died for four months apart. They okay. died for they passed away four months apart from each other. So, you know, like I'm happy to be in this place because the past few years have been really like lonely. You get what I'm saying? Like I felt I like something was missing. Like you know, I've had relationships and stuff like that, but it still wasn't what I wanted. You know, so. I'm happy to be at a point where I'm content with, I'm not content, like, I want more, but what I'm saying, I'm okay with being a single mother and being a single woman and providing on my own. Like, I'm not one of them chicks that's looking like, oh, man, I got to find me a nigga because (laughs) I need somebody to go half on these bills, you know? Right. So, I mean, I am happy to be in this place, and I'm happy that... I know my aunt and my mother 
broken down. They they are really, really like like really, really amazed and proud because they wouldn't seem they probably would never think like, oh she she's motivating, she's talking to people. Like I told I would I was never that person. Right. That's huge. So, thank you thank so much, you. man. Yeah, right, I mean, so, keep in touch, all right? All right. <laughs> all right, yo, peace. Bye.